Hey everybody, Prowl here and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. Uh, today we are going to be taking a look at a honeycomb farm. You see I got the uh, honeycomb here in my hand. Uh, this tutorial will work for both Bedrock and Java editions of the game, even though yes, I do typically do Bedrock stuff. Um, this one will work for both versions of the game. And uh, we are going to be taking a look at this honeycomb farm that I built. It is super easy, very survival friendly. Actually, it only requires three hoppers. That's right. Three hoppers is all you need for this guy right here. And a uh, dispenser for each uh, honeycomb or each, what are they called? Hive. Each hive. Yes, that's right. So... Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, go over just a few basic things about uh, Honeycomb and we will then get into the tutorial. All right, and uh, let's go over just a few basic things on how this works. So I do have, you can kind of see them from this angle, some hives tucked up in there. Uh, we do have a comparator that is reading the honey level of the hives. Once the honey level gets to five, it will then be putting out a five signal strength, at which point it will trigger all of these dispensers to gather the honeycomb. Um, like I said earlier, uh, this only requires three hoppers. As you can see, I got water streams flowing down into the hoppers right here, which is sending all my honeycomb to this chest right there. Plenty of honeycomb there already. And I did try to make this as survival friendly as possible. You need very few materials. Um, for each hive, you are only going to need one dropper, not dropper, one dispenser. Don't make sure it's not a dropper. It's got to be a dispenser. <clears throat> so one dispenser, um, you'll need one piece of redstone and then for the whole module regardless of how big you go you can kind of make this as big as you want you just got to expand the redstone signal out I'll actually be making a larger one in the actual walkthrough just to show you guys a bigger model uh, but you'll need one comparator one repeater and uh, just some blocks to kind of block up the honeycomb from getting out you'll need a hive of course for each hive that you want and uh, some flowers as well now, typically, you don't really need all of these flowers. I do like to add in three, uh, one flower for each bee, though. It just makes it, to me, a tiny bit more efficient to where the bees are not fighting each other to get to the flowers. They can just easily get to whichever one they want to and then go back in. But if you like to, and maybe I'll do this for the tutorial part, we'll cut it down to just one row of uh, flowers and then a little bit extra space for them to easily get in and out because, again, you do not want them to fight each other as they try to go through. Um, a couple basic things, you'll need to know how to make a hive. A hive is made out made out of actually honeycomb, which I have right here, as well as uh, wood planks. Uh, honeycomb can be used to make the beehives and honeycomb blocks. Uh, who knows what kind of use it could also have in the future, but those are the two things honeycomb is used for as of right now. Um, each hive can hold three bees. That's why we have three bees per hive. And um, yes, multiple bees can pollinate one flower, so that's why we should be able to cut down the amount of flowers in here for the actual full build. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. Okay, so we are actually going to start with the collection system. What I'm going to have you do is go ahead and place down a double chest and then run one, two, three hoppers right into that chest. Now this particular module that we're gonna make is gonna be 17 blocks wide, but remember you can make this as wide as you prefer. Um, so first I'm gonna go, this is gonna be my center, so I'm gonna go eight blocks in each direction and make my floor first. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna fill in my floor right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and fill in my floor right there, just like that. And then we need to go ahead and put our border in around here, just like so. Don't need those corner blocks if you don't want them. That's perfectly fine. Across like so. And then fill in the back side, just like that. Now, at the end here, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and throw in our water buckets, but we don't need to do that quite yet. And next, we're going to need to build this wall up right here. So you'll want to go up one and two just like that two more here and two more right there now this right here is going to be the level that your hoppers 
I mean, your, your hives are going to go, but we need to put in our dispensers first. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put in one block right here and I'm going to hold down my duck button and just go ahead and fill in dispensers going all the way across just like this. And these are going to have shears put in them in just a little bit. We don't need to do that quite yet. And uh, we'll go ahead and put in our beehives just straight across here, just like that. So those are all ready to be sheared off when uh, we get to that point. Uh, we can go ahead and cover these guys in right here, just like this. And we want to make sure that there is no way that honey can, or the honeycomb can actually get through these blocks at all. So we're actually just going to kind of build a little casing here all the way across, just like this. Now, the only place that the honey can go when it gets harvested is it will go straight down. If you want to, you can go ahead and throw your water in now, just like this and like this. And remember, we're going to bring in three bees per hive. Um, and if you don't want to go this big, that is fine. You could chop this thing and make it as small as you want to. Um, the build process from this will be exactly the same. Now, depending on how frequently you want this to trigger off, uh, we need to pull comparator signal or signals out of the back of here. Now, technically, the more that you add in, the more efficient this farm is going to be. So I'm actually going to add in a couple. So the hive is on this level right here, like this. Oop, missed a gap right here, which means our hives are behind all of these blocks right here. So what I'm going to do is do that. I forgot to put a repeater or a comparator in my hot bar. So let me grab one of those. We'll grab a comparator right here. This will actually be reading our honeycomb through that block. So what will happen is as the honey levels go up, it will increase the amount of signal that is going to our, or coming out of our comparator, and we need it to pull out a five signal. So we got one, two, three, four, five. So I will take my redstone and just stair step up here. One, two, three, four, five, and we will throw a repeater right here. All right, so one minor modification to make, instead of using the repeater right there, instead use an observer. Um, I'll explain why on that here in just a few moments, but uh, if you use repeaters, this has the tendency to get stuck. If you use the observers, it will not. And uh, I'll go over that at the very end. <clears throat> and just to make this guy trigger off more frequently, what I am going to do is actually throw in a few of these. This will increase your efficiency by a pretty decent amount, so I do recommend that you do it. Um, we will go ahead and throw this in right here, and then I will, oh, we need to go over one. So just to the like side of that, that's when you could throw in another one. Two, three, four, five, just like that. And then I will stair step this up. And then we can maybe fit two more. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw those in right now. All right, so now that we have five in here, basically what it's doing is if any one of those five honeycomb or um, beehives gets to that five honey level, it will then trigger all of them. So this way we're being as efficient as possible. You, again, you don't need all five if you don't want to. If you want to save on the material, that is absolutely fine. Just go ahead and probably build this middle one right here or this one right here off to the side would be all you need. You just need one. Um, and then once you do that, all you need to do is place your redstone right across here on top of all the droppers. Oh, wait, don't do that yet. Don't do that yet. You got to put the uh, shears in first. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so once you fill them all up with shears, and I do recommend that you fill them. That way you have to do less maintenance and come in and fill more later. Um, is just go ahead and fill them up and then throw in your redstone across just like this right here. That will take you all the way across and it will power all of them for us just perfectly fine. And then next we need to prepare our area for our bees. This is the redstones all done. So next what we're going to do is I'm going to throw in one row of grass right here. I don't like to put the grass right here because again, I want the bees to kind of be somewhat free to move around and not uh, necessarily have to, I guess, bump into each other and slow each other down. So we will go just like this. 
I'm actually going to end up creating a grass, a glass dome around that, which I'm going to do here in just a moment. Uh, first, we're just going to grab a flower. Um, you can grab any flower. It doesn't matter what. We could grab these blue orchids. will be perfectly fine. And just fill those in all the way down, just like so. And like I said, go ahead and just fill this in like that. I'm going to go ahead and throw in the glass dome really quick, and then we're going to add our bees. All right, now that I got it covered in glass, you can cover it with whatever block you want. It could be a solid block. It could be like I did on the other farm. I did the honey farm where I used a fence. It's actually down there. So lots of different ways you can do it. Uh, totally up to you in terms of the design. I do like to have the three block ceiling. I've just, it feel like it lets the bees fly around a little bit more and not have to fight each other when trying to get to the uh, honey, the hives, which are again, right down in there. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get three bees per hive in here, which for 17 is quite a lot. Again, you might not want yours this big, or maybe you do, I don't know. Um, now, there's a few ways that you guys can get bees in here. I have this nice nifty spawn egg, but uh, bees can be uh, leashed, so you can get the lasso or leash or whatever it's called and bring them in that way. Um, you can hold a flower in your hand and they will follow you just like other animals will with other types of food that they like. Um, and then also, if you find a naturally occurring uh, beehive or bee nest, once there are three bees in it, or at least two bees in it, you can then go and use a silk touch uh, tool. So silk touch pickaxe or axe, whatever it is, make sure it has silk touch on it. And if you use that, it will actually give you the bees that are in the hive as well. So that is the easiest way to transport them. You can breed bees with flowers. So once you get them in here, at least a couple, you can then breed them up to as many as you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in all that we need and I'll be right back. All right, so here we go. We got all of the bees. They are going in and out of the hives, as you can see. Uh, some of them are gathering the pollen, um, and we have all of the observers up here. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, what was happening was if I had repeaters here, I don't know if it was because some would like trigger at the same time or really what it was, but like sometimes at the end of the repeater, it would not actually fire off the um, the dispenser that it was sitting on and it would actually end up locking up the system so instead i threw in the observers now every once in a while one of the observers will get locked up like for some reason this one is right here like you see it did not harvest uh this one right here for whatever reason i don't know why but uh essentially since we have a few of them actually triggering off it's not a problem once one of these other ones gets up to that level like this one right here it'll go through and it will shear off the honeycomb and everything will be good um, also if you really wanted to you could throw in a little switch to reset it in case uh, whatever you do gets the system locked up where you could just go in and flick it just to trigger all of the shears from going off uh, this has been running for several minutes now and as you can see um, it has tons of honeycomb already um, each hive will drop three honeycomb every time it is sheared so this little farm right here is pretty quick and efficient and will get you all of the honeycomb that you need so that will be it appreciate you guys for joining me here today and you have a good one goodbye